everybody, my name is Professor Scaler, but you knew that already, and welcome to the R4B3 guide, Chrysolite. Here you'll be tasked with uplink terminals, cryogenic case retrieval, a backdoor command, birthers, scouts, a brand new alarm door, and many, 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 many francs. But hey, this just sounds like a, any typical day down in the complex, right? So it shouldn't be anything too difficult for you all. So let's dive right in and get to work. In this level, you're going to be dealing with uplink terminals, quite a few alarm doors, and a new type of alarm that's going to force you to hold your ground for several minutes while dealing with large amounts of enemies coming after you wave after wave. For these reasons, you're going to want a bit of a defensive loadout for this level. So, I would recommend a Mine Deployer, a Seafoam Launcher, and two Auto Sentries. Seafoam and Mine are pretty self-explanatory. The Auto Sentries are going to be very helpful for the fact that they have a lot of ammunition, very high rate of fire, and their staggering effect. Combine this with weapons like the Auto Pistols and the Combat Shotgun, and you'll be staggering so many enemies so quickly that they won't even have the opportunity to attack you most of the time. And this will be very beneficial, especially for dealing with the Overload objective. Now, you don't have to have two auto sentries. You can definitely replace one of the auto sentries and take something like a bio tracker or a turret that has more kill potential. However, if you do end up swapping out one of the two auto sentries, I would highly recommend that two people on your team take auto pistols. That way you still have plenty of flinch on your team and you won't be missing out too much on it because one auto sentry isn't going to quite give you enough flinch to deal with everything. The other thing is when it comes to this level is that you're going to want to make sure you're prioritizing certain tools during certain objectives. When you're doing the extreme and the overload objective, top priority would be the auto sentries. Make sure that most if not all the tool refill is going to them. You're not going to be given a whole lot of it on this level. Then when you finish those and you go back to the main objective, the mine deployer and sea foam launcher are going to be top priority. You're going to be doing a lot of uplink terminals in rooms that are very small and the last thing you need are for enemies to get into that room when you're only on this first or second code. So to make things easier, Seafoam Launcher will be a higher priority than the Auto Sentry. The other thing too is Seafoam Grenades. If you find a Seafoam Grenade on this level, hold onto it for the, pretty much the entire level. The thing is, you are very rarely going to find one. It's not often you do find one, and if you find two, you should consider yourself extremely lucky. When you're about to finish the overload objective, there will be a point where you're going to want that seafoam grenade to make things much easier, but I will talk about that more when we get to that point. With the loadout out of the way, let's start talking about the level itself and how to take care of each of the objectives. The main objective for this level is to find three specific terminals and create an uplink at every single one of them. The first two terminals always be in the same two zones, and the third terminal being in one or two different zones. However, we're not going to talk too much about this right now. You do have access to the first uplink terminal, or at least the zone to it right off the bat. However, to get to the other two, you need to go behind the main bulkhead door. And if you're going for prisoner efficiency, you cannot do that until the very end, as you need to open up the extreme and overload bulkhead doors first. So, if you are somebody who is interested in only the main objective and you do not care about extreme and overload, skip to the timestamp that you see on screen. The rest of you though, meet me over by the extreme bulkhead door to zone 123, and we'll start talking about the rest of that. The bulkhead door to zone 123 is just a full team scan. Inside you'll notice that your extreme objective is to find two cryogenic cases and bring them back to extraction. They will always be found in zone 125 and 126. Zone 123 itself though doesn't really have anything noteworthy in it, just enemies and a single medkit that you can find. On the far west side there will be a security door that leads to zone 124, this is just a full team scan. Inside of zone 124, you will find the second bulkhead key, the door control to the overload objective, two scouts, and then either a bunch of regular enemies, big strikers, or hybrids throughout the room. And you will also find the security door that leads you to zone 125, 126, and the overload bulkhead door which is to zone 363. There's only one entrance to this room and you have three security doors that all have alarms on them. So ideally you're going to want to do as many of them as you can before you open up any of the zones to minimize spawn locations. Let's start off with the hardest of the bunch, which is going to be the overload bulkhead door, which is known as a S1 alarm. S1 alarm, also known as a sustain alarm class one. 
These alarm types made their first appearance in this level, and while they're not too complicated mechanically, they are pretty difficult to deal with if your team is low on resources. The number behind the S will signify how many waves you have to deal with, so since this is just an S1 alarm, you just have one scan you have to do. However, this scan is going to take two minutes to finish. The stained scans are going to be purple, and it's always going to be a full team scan. The big kicker with them though, is if anybody steps out of the scan or dies at any point, the scan will start losing progress at the same rate in which it would gain it. Which means, kiting is not an option for this alarm door. Let's look at a floor plan for this alarm. As you can see, there's only one room enemies will spawn in, and there's only one door you can shut to buy time. I would recommend shutting the door, sea foaming it, and placing a few mines on it to deal with pretty much the entire wave when they finally break it down. Three mines will probably be good enough. Then, if you're using burst or sniper sentries, place them on the bridge, that way they shoot enemies from behind when they cross it. And then auto sentries should be placed right in front of you to stagger enemies when they make it to you. This is why I emphasize to take two auto sentries or weapons that have stagger, like the combat shotgun and the auto pistol. You are going to have times where there are going to be about 20 enemies right in front of you, and you don't want them to lick you and to do deal damage to you, because if even one person dies, things are going to go downhill quickly. So if you have auto pistol, focus more on staggering every single enemy instead of trying to kill them. Once you have finished your sustain alarm though and you clear out the rest of the enemies, do not open up the bulkhead door. You're going to want to head over to the security door to zone 125 and do that alarm first, that way you can ensure that enemies will only spawn from the east. The security door to zone 125 is a class 2 alarm, however, both scans are going to be full team scans, and they're going to take longer than your typical full team scans do. This alarm though isn't too difficult, and I would recommend don't even place your sentries down for this. You should be able to finish the first scan before enemies really get to you, and then you can simply just shoot or kite enemies to deal with the second scan. Once that's done though, you can then head into zone 125, because in order to get to 126, you need a key card that will only be found in 125. Zone 125 will always have the first crowd gen in case you need for the extreme objective. They'll have a key card to get into zone 126, and it's going to have a lot of enemies in it, and a lot of them are going to be big strikers and big shooters. I would recommend clear out the first room of enemies completely, but don't kill off the enemies in any of the other rooms throughout the rest of the zone. You don't need to worry about them, they're not going to get pulled in when you do the alarm door to zone 126, and if you do accidentally wake them up, then you're going to be wasting a lot of ammunition that you can't really spare at this point. I would just say clear out the first room, then stealth your way through the rest of it and just focus on getting the crowd gen case and the key card and the resources and then getting out. Make sure all three doors connected to the first room are shut, because all of these can then be used in the alarm door to zone 126. The security door to zone 126 is a class 3 alarm, and just like 125, Every single scan is going to be a full team scan. Here is a map overlay of what this is going to look like. You can see that they're either going to spawn from the east like they normally do, or they will spawn to the west and break down any of those three doors. I wouldn't recommend sea foaming any of them. If you have the mines to spare, you can definitely place a mine on the three doors. But again, don't use your sentries, don't use sea foam. Just kite the best you can and use your guns to hold them off, because you're going to want to preserve the sentry ammo for the overload zone. Once you finish the security door though, you can then head to zone 126. Zone 126 will always have your second crowd in a case, and it's going to have a lot, and I mean a lot, of big strikers, big shooters, and even some hybrids in there. I would recommend not killing a single enemy if you can get away with it. If you see lockers with ha padlocks on them or hacks, just use a lock mounter to get rid of it. Don't try to kill the enemies nearby it because there are many, many rooms for error in this zone and it's best to just stealth your way through the entire thing if you can. You don't have to worry about these enemies getting pulled out because of gunshots or because of future alarm doors, so leave most of these enemies be if you can. Once you have the second crowd in a case though, you can take the first and second one all the way back to where you dropped into the level and just place them down near the cliff edge. You're going to need these for the extraction circle once you finally complete the main objective, but once you have both of the cases there, you're done with the extreme objective, and then you can come back, open up the bulkhead door to zone 361, and then head into there to do your overload objective. Upon entering zone 363, you'll see that your overload objective is to input a backdoor command at a specific terminal. This terminal will always be located inside zone 366, which is just on the other side of the room from where you entered in. However, to get to it, you're going to have to clear out two scouts, 
quite a few enemies, and potentially a few hybrids. The security door to Zone 366 requires a key card to get into it, and this key card will always be located in Zone 364 or 365. Both of these security doors are going to be Cluster 4 alarm doors, so there's no difference in difficulty going into them, and because of the room layout, the way you prepare for both of them is pretty similar. Here is your floor plan for those of you who have to go into 364, and then if you just mirror it, this is what it's going to look like for those of you who have to get into Zone 365. You may notice that I specified to leave a specific door open on both of them to funnel enemies. The reason for this is because you want both of the northern doors to be preserved by the time you finish this alarm door. That way you can use them when you're dealing with the alarm door to Zone 366. However, you don't want to just simply leave them open, as that will make it so enemies can get to you very quickly. If you leave the door on the opposite side open, it will ensure that they funnel through that one and then they come to the bottom door on your side and you don't have to worry about the northern door getting broken down. When it comes to dealing with this alarm as well, I would recommend not using your sentries. Just have the person with the seafoam watchers re seafoam the door once or twice and then have some mines on the door that way it blows up most of the enemies when they finally come in. Once you finish the alarm door you have to deal with though, you can then head into the zone to go after the keycard. Zone 364 and 365 are very similar to each other. They are both pitch black, they will have quite a few resources as well as the keycard you need for Zone 366, but they will also have a scout and a birther located in one of the rooms. So if you're the type of person who likes to shoot scouts upon seeing them, I would recommend holding off until you know for a fact that birther is not also in the room with you. If the birther is in any room except for the first one, that's pretty good because you don't have to kill it and you can just sneak past it. However, if it is in the first room, you're going to have to kill it, otherwise it might get dragged in while you're doing the security door to zone 366. In this situation, I would recommend just sea foaming her with the launcher and then everybody shooting her. Clear out the rest of the room first though if you can, that way you don't have hybrids or other enemies charging you down while you're trying to kill her. Once you've cleared out the zone, or you've just gone through and collected your keycard and resources, you can then leave and head back to Zone 366's security door to get ready to deal with that. The security door to Zone 366 is a sustain one alarm, that is also a blood door, that is also a screech door. Yeah, quite a bit to it. Let's start off talking about the sustain portion of it with the floor plan. As you can see, there's quite a few different locations that enemies can spawn. Now, obviously, I have Zone 364 and 365 open on this floor plan. You're only going to have one of those two open, so you can disregard the other one. But enemies are going to be spawning in quite a few different locations. However, this isn't actually as bad as it may look. The reason why I said you want to make sure the two northern doors are preserved is for this reason. That way, no matter which one of the two zones you had to open up, when enemies come out of there, they're going to just go for the southern door on their portion, come out there, and then go up through the middle of the room to get up to you. And then, any enemy that spawns outside of the zone will also come up through the middle portion of the room to get to you, effectively funneling enemies through the exact same route, no matter where they spawn in. For this, you can't really use seafoam or mine since there are no doors you can shut, so I would say just hold onto them, you're going to want to save them for later anyway. Your sentries on the other hand, you want to place them in front of you, place one a little bit more to the left, one a little bit more to the right, assuming you have two auto sentries, if you have something that isn't an auto sentry or you just have one auto sentry, Try to place it more facing towards the middle, that way you'll shoot enemies no matter which route they come from. And then it's all up to your team to just stagger and kill enemies before they get to you and kill you. Obviously be careful of any hybrids that might spawn in, use burst cans to get rid of them from afar. And if you have stuff like the auto pistol or the combat shotgun, I recommend you stand in the front and focus on flinching enemies while the rest of your team focuses on killing them. If you're low on HP, stand towards the back, just make sure you don't kite into each other, and you should be good. Once you finish the sustained portion of this alarm, you now have the blood door to deal with. However, there's more than just simply the blood door. Behind this door is just a single room, and this single room will only have one enemy in it, and it's a birther. Now normally, you could just run away from the door so the enemies don't scream and it won't set off the birther. However, this is also a screech door like I mentioned, so she is guaranteed to get set off no matter what. My recommendation is to place down a lot of mines on the blood door and making a little bit of a trail to this room like you can see in the background footage if you can afford that many mines. Thankfully this blood door doesn't seem to spawn in hybrids and doesn't even spawn in that many regular strikers and shooters, so a few well placed mines should be able to deal with everything. Or if you have some turret ammunition left, you could definitely place those down too to shoot and kill the rest of the enemies. 
Then when it comes to the birther, this is the reason why I said you want to hold on to a seafoam grenade if you have found one. Make sure you're not just looking at boxes by the way and you're actually checking the environment itself. It could just be on a shelf somewhere, but try to find one if you can. If you have a seafoam grenade, all four of you just have to stand in this room. She can't see you until she enters into this room, meaning she can't birth until she finally walks in. Then when she walks in, you can just jump down and seafoam her before she finishes the birthing animation and then kill her before she breaks out of the seafoam. If you do not have a seafoam grenade though, there is also another method, although it is not foolproof. What you can do is place out a large trail of seafoam around the corner, that way when she does get closer to the door, she'll naturally pick it all up. You need more than one full charge of the seafoam launcher to fully encase her, meaning you can't just simply seafoam her when she comes in and you'll be good. If you place a lot of it on the floor though, she'll walk through it, pick up most of it, and then when she does charge through, you can have a full charge of seafoam ready in the launcher, wait for her to stop moving, and then spray it onto her as she stops, and this will hopefully fully encase her if she picks up enough from outside. If she doesn't, it won't fully seafoam her and you're gonna have to deal with the baby, so I would also recommend you have a few fog repellers on hand just in case things don't work out. However, no matter what method you take, once you have finished killing the birther, you can then head into zone 366, find your third and final bulkhead key, grab the resources that are in there, and then you can get ready to do the backdoor terminal command. This backdoor terminal is very similar to the one in R4A3 in the overload sector. Once you put the command in, a full team scan will appear. When the full team scan is finished, it will then initiate a short alarm which will spawn in a few waves of enemies. Most of these enemies are just going to be regular strikers and shooters, but they will typically be about 4 hybrids that also come in with the mix. I would say either fall back to one of the side rooms if you can, if you have the doors and you can just shut those and place some mines or seafoam on them, or you could just simply hold down the room you're in using your sentries if you still have some sentry ammo left over. There's not going to be a ton of enemies, usually around 40 or so regular strikers and shooters, and then the four hybrids, which can definitely be dealt with if your team is coordinated and you're working together. After all, they're not all going to arrive on you at the same time. Once every single one of these enemies is dead though, you've completed the overload objective and now you can head all the way back to zone 37 to deal with the main objective. Putting your bulkhead key into the door control and selecting your main objective will give you access to the bulkhead door to zone 39. However, before you go there, you're going to want to head to the southeast corner of zone 37 and unlock the security door that leads to zone 38. This is where your first uplink terminal is going to be located. This security door requires a key card that could be found somewhere inside of zone 37, so not too far away from you, and the security door itself is a class 2 cluster alarm. Now a class 2 cluster alarm doesn't sound too bad in itself, however looking at the floor plan you can see that enemies are going to be spawning very very close to you, and that's because of the room divider that separates uh, room F and room E. For this reason, you're going to want to make sure you see film that door, otherwise enemies are going to break it down and get on top of you right as you're finishing the full team scan. Seafoam will buy you time and make it so you can actually finish almost all the scans before enemies get into the room. Once the door is unlocked, you can then head into zone 38. Zone 38 has two different terminals that could be your uplink terminal, so let's look at a floor plan for both of them. This is the floor plan for the first terminal. As you can see, there are two different rooms that they can spawn in. Both of these rooms have two exits to them, the eastern doors and the western doors. If all four doors are shut, they will always take the two eastern doors to get to you. However, if you leave the two western doors open, they will take those instead and go out that way. This could be useful if you don't want to use mines or seafoam or if you just want to preserve the resources. I would recommend leaving the western doors open. That way, it takes a little bit longer for them to get to you. After all, you never want to shut doors unless if you're either seafoaming them, you have turrets on them, or you have mines on them, otherwise you're just letting enemies group up and cluster into much larger groups before they finally get to you. And then here is the floor plan for the other terminal. This one's a bit simpler, there's only one room that they can spawn in, one door they can go to to get into your room. Here you can very easily just keep that door perma seafoamed until you finally finish all four codes. Every single uplink terminal in this level will require four codes to finish it. Personally, I like to just keep the door perma foamed, but it's up to your team, your resources, and your playstyle. Once you finish this uplink terminal, you can then head back into zone 37 and go to the main bulkhead door that leads to zone 39. Zone 39 will have your second uplink terminal, as well as a key card to get you to zone 40, and a power cell to get you to zone 41. 
one of which of those two zones you're going to have to go to to get to your third and final uplink terminal. But before we talk about that one, let's talk about the second terminal in here. Now, bringing up a map overlay without putting the numbers or anything on it, you can probably already guess there's quite a few different locations these enemies can spawn in during these uplink terminals, no matter which one of the two you get. And you can also see that there are two potential alarm doors you have to go to, and this can get a bit messy because if you do the uplink terminal, there's quite a few alarm do or doors that could get broken down that you might want to use during the alarm door. For that reason, I would recommend your team position yourself something like this right here that you can see on screen. This will force the spawns all the way back to that western room and they will only ever spawn back in there. Then there are only two doors that they can break down to get to you and these two doors are not super valuable for the alarm doors afterwards. Here I would just recommend one person be on the terminal to take care of it, the other two people just be positioned that way the spawns are forced to be back there, and your fourth person with the seafoam launcher should be positioned near this door here, that way you can just keep re foaming it over and over again, that way enemies don't break through until you're almost done with all the codes. I would say once you are putting in the third code, the other two people can transition over to the, the guy by that door, and then all three of you could just let the door break open, and you can kill off all the enemies. Around the time you start killing them, the fourth code should start being put in, which will make no more enemies spawn in, and you don't have to worry about enemies spawning somewhere else in the zone and breaking down valuable doors. Once you finish this uplink terminal, you can then query where your third terminal is, and then prepare to go to either zone 40 or 41. Both of these security doors are class 3 alarms. This is what the floor plan is going to look like for zone 40. As you can see, you are in just one small tiny room and there's quite a few different directions they can come from, but ultimately, they're all going to be coming for that door there. So I would say make sure every other door in the zone is shut, and then see from that door that you're at and keep them out of that room. That is a tiny room and the last thing you need is for a bunch of enemies to be flooding in while you're only on the second or third wave of scans. So I would recommend you actually save a little bit of seafoam from after the uplink terminal. Make sure you don't spend all of it, that way you have enough to completely seafoam the door once or even twice during this alarm. If you're going to zone 41 though, this is what your map overlay is going to look like. As you can see, there's a few different zones that they can come through and there are three different doors they can break down to get into your room. I would just say keep an ear out and whoever has your seafoam launcher, just sort of hover near the doors and don't focus too much on the scans. Do the full team scan, then listen to figure out which way they're going to come from, that way you can see from the door once or twice while the rest of your team focuses on the scans. Then once all the scans are finished, you can let the doors break open, deal with all the enemies, and once they're all dead, you can then head into the zone you need to go into. Zone 40 is quite nice because a lot of the rooms are connected to each other which makes it very easy to properly funnel enemies and ensure that there's only one location they can spawn in. This is a layout of the zone without any numbers on it. All you have to do is have one person stand next to both terminals, no matter which uplink terminal you get. Doing so will cause the floor layout to look like this. As you can see, only one room they can spawn in. However, a thing I should mention is make sure nobody is standing in room B. If somebody's in B, then there's no valid spawn point. Don't forget that with uplink terminals, enemies cannot spawn outside of the zone you're in. So, if there is no valid spawn point, they will either spawn one room away from you or they will spawn directly on top of you. So, make sure that everybody is in one of the two rooms that the terminals are in. Once you have all that prepared though, you can then do your third and final uplink terminal. Zone 41 is a bit different though. As you can see, there's only three total rooms in this entire zone and all of them are connected to each other, which means there's no valid two room away spawn location for these enemies. So instead, they're going to be spawning one of the two rooms that you are not in. I don't know what happens if you split your team into two different rooms. I don't know if that's going to make it so that they only spawn in the third room. It might, or it might make it so that they can literally spawn right on top of you in one of the two rooms you're in. Either way though, I would just suggest all four people stay in the same room and just be very attentive as to where enemies are going to come from. If you get the northeastern terminal, that's pretty good because there's only two entrances to the room, so it'll be very easy to pay attention to what direction they come, see from the doors, place mines on them, or place on your sentries if need be. If you get the other terminal though, there's a total of three different doors. I would just simply say, have the person with seafoam in mines, just mine each door in advance, seafoam just get ready to see from the door that they start banging on, and then your sentries should just probably be positioned in a way that they can protect the dude who's on the terminal. But just tough it through, this is the very last terminal, it is a bit of an awkward setup, but at the same time, it's nothing too deadly or devastating to deal with. 
Once you finish this third terminal though, you have finished the main objective. But of course, things can't just be that simple, can they? Once you finish the third and final uplink terminal, it's going to cause the extraction circle to appear and a permanent alarm is going to go off. This is going to be spawning in waves upon waves of enemies pretty quickly and they're not going to stop until either you're dead or you've completed the level and you get out of there. To prepare for this though, I would say before you do the third and final uplink terminal, make sure that you have a route planned out from where you are back to the beginning. Make sure everybody knows the route that you're going to take, then go back through all the zones that you have to travel through and shut every single door that you're not going to be going through. That way if enemies spawn behind them as you're running out, they're going to have to break down those doors to get to you and it'll buy you more time. Then, as you finish the final uplink terminal and you're running out to go back to extraction, shut every single door behind you to buy yourself even more time in case they spawn behind you. A lot of the time, enemies are going to spawn in front of you, just push through them, don't bother stopping to shoot them, just keep on running, you'll probably run through a door you can shut that will barricade them away from you, and just keep on moving. I wouldn't worry too much about sea foaming or trying to place mines or anything. This extraction scan does not take very long to finish, so really, as long as you get back there and you don't have about 20 enemies on top of you, you should be pretty good. But once you get that extraction circle up to 100%, you are done and you have beaten R4B3. As always, if you have any tips or tricks for this level that you want to share, any questions for me, or you just have something in general that you want to say, leave it down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, then consider hitting that like button. It helps out the channel and helps these videos get noticed by people who really need them. And if you want to become part of this community, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to get notified whenever I post a brand new video. Until next time, don't forget to stop by and say hello to Frank. After all, he just wants a hug. And I'll see you all in the next video.